Speaking of debris, speaking mm. of debris, uh, there was this asteroid uh, that collided with Earth uh, over uh, Chelyabinsk in the Soviet Union, in Russia, sorry, uh, just near the Siberia, in the Ural Mountains, just on the coast of Siberia, on the border of Siberia. That was visible to everybody in broad daylight, and you had to like avert your eyes when it happened. And they felt a shockwave, and the shockwave broke windows and sent 600 people, nearly 1,000 people to the hospital. What happened? Well, because they saw the light, and they, came, they got up from their table and went to the window to see what had happened, there's a time delay between the shockwave and the light, because light travels fast and sound travels slow. So they'll go to the windows, and the shockwave hits, and it blasts broken glass into their face. So it was a big Band-Aid collision that we had. Whoa. The injured people all needed basically Band-Aids. Okay, no one died, but nearly 1,000 people were injured. So at an auction, by the way, that, that actually exploded, and pieces of it were recovered. At an auction, I purchased a piece of that meteorite. But you know what else I purchased? Some of the shards of glass. Mm. That the shockwave had broken. Wow! What do you do with this shit? I've got it. It's mm-hmm. just I have it. I'm, I'm a part <laughs> of. It is a shot across our bow. That's what that. No one died. But it's a warning. There's no better way to Wake be warned call. than to have a band aid cover your injuries that could have vaporized you or rendered your species extinct. What's crazy is the ones that don't even make impact and still do devastating damage, yes. like Tunguska. Yes, that that one didn't even touch Earth. Yeah. Right. Right, it incinerated 10,000 square kilometers of forest. Look at that right. honk. Holy shit. Yeah, so February 15, 2013, and uh, there was a- Weighs over half a ton? That, that pe- little rock weighs oh. 1,000 pounds? Oh, yeah. Holy oh, yeah. shit. That's just a piece that made it through. Is it iron? Oh, the actual piece would have been uh, about the size of this room, so a small home. Wow. So, But yeah. that's amazing that that small rock, go back up to that again, please. Look at the size of that. That's not that big. No, no that's what's left over. Right. Most of it ex- vaporized on that on the explosion as it came through the atmosphere. Right, but they're saying that that piece of it weighs a thousand pounds. Uh, do they give the the weight of it? Yeah, it yeah, says yeah. it okay. weighs over a half ton. Yeah. Oh, half ton. Yeah, a thousand pounds. There you go. That's crazy. Yeah. That that rock is that fucking heavy. Yeah. So How, is it so made the out solar. Of iron? This, yes. Well, the, I, I I have to read that to to know for sure. But I think it was an iron meteorite. I'll tell you and, something. What. I have a, a knife that was made out of a piece of meteorite. Oh, as do I. Oh, they're beautiful. Oh, yeah. It's a kitchen knife that I use. Oh, see, I, mine is like a it's like a crocodile Dundee knife. Ooh. Yeah. The, the, that's not a knife. That's a knife. There's, that's a knife. <laughs> uh, but it's waiting. I, I, I want to make a, or get someone to make a handle for it. It's just the, it's just the metal that would be, uh, oh, that would then forged. get. For, it's a forged metal with the blade, but then you get a pearl handle attached to the, the base of it. Oh. Yeah. So it's, Pearl, it's a handleless, huh? uh, an un, it's an unadorned piece of metal that would become a, a you know, the, right. the, a knife but that would carry with you. it's sharpened Oh, yeah, it's completely shaped. sharpened. Oh, well, yeah. Where's the fucking handle? There is the metal handle. Have you ever seen ni- uh, uh, kitchen knives? Oh, the, the, the metal goes all, all the way metal. down in, down the center of the handle, and you, you screw wooden handles on the side. So you just need the wooden part. I just need the wood or the, or the if I'm patent, it would be pearl, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Like think, a pearl handed revolver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. You had a pearl pistol. Yeah. My. So so uh, yeah, it's p- a part of history and it's a reminder that if you want to think about the future of civilization, you have to include a defense plan against asteroids. Yeah. The well, dinosaurs the- dinosaurs I bet if they could they would have had a space program. To yeah. not go extinct. They wouldn't know shit. <laughs> they didn't know <laughs> thinking. Now is there anything that we're doing now other than we're, we're, occasionally looking up? Yeah, we're looking, we're monitoring and cataloging them. Yeah, but we don't so, really know what to do if yeah, something so happens. The day would come, well, we know what to do. There's nothing fun to do. There are engineering conferences. How would you deflect an asteroid? Okay. How would you destroy an if asteroid? If we see one and uh, it's a, if a we year see one, away and, and it's coming 100%. It's yeah, just hit. kiss your ass goodbye. 
That's right. it. We would, we would have the power to tell you when you would die and what part of Earth it would hit. Yeah, so there's people that have very delusional ideas about what we can and can't do with asteroids, and that drives me crazy. Well, no, the, no it's not. That. We know how to defo- the, the right, in, I've seen the engineering place. plans. They look very good, but there's nothing in place. Right. That's, there's Project you. Sentinel, you can look it up, that is, has tasked themselves with organizing world governments to protect Earth from species-killing asteroids. Mm. And you need the world because you don't know in advance – until it's discovered what part of Earth it's going to hit. And if it's going to hit in the Indian Ocean, and if Indian, if, if um, the surrounding regions don't have a space program, are, are the countries that do have a space pro- program going to sit idle? No. What you want to do is you want to have a fund, and every country pipes in a little bit of their GDP, and then, or, or whatever, uh, 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 um, you know, you measure it however you want it, whatever you think is fair. Do it the way... Uh, the way uh, the UN does it, okay? So there's a tax of the world relative to your wealth. And then that money pays to save the world when we find such an asteroid. That, that's how you, the Sentinel, Project Sentinel is, is, uh, has thought this through. So if there was engineers something and scientists, had ample time, there's, possi- there's a possibility that they could actually implement some of these plans. It's all about how much time you have because what you want right. to do is go out and nudge it. Right, a little bit. If you, a little bit. You just have to give it a sideways velocity relative to its path towards Earth. And if you do that early enough, the, the sideways velocity sort of accumulates. Right, like a ship turning slightly over the ocean. Over the course of time, it'll deviate quite a bit. Correct. So that angle grows. Yeah. I mean, it's the same angle, but the, right. it spreads out. Right. And it's the, the ocean example is perfect. It's a perfect analogy. So if you do that early enough... You do it enough so that it misses Earth, and it's still out there to harm you in another day, but it won't render you extinct on that passage. How much time do we need today? Uh, if I would say we could probably get something built in 10 years. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> what? Neil deGrasse Tyson, what did you just do? 10 years? I'm looking for a month. And, that, and that's, oh, no. Oh, my gosh. So it's a year. If we have a year, we're The fucked. good thing about species-killing asteroids is that they're large and visible. What about city-killing ones? Them suckers oh. slip through. Yeah, they'll slip through. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but most of Earth's surface is not city, so it'll probably hit the ocean oh. or, or land. But, well, yeah, if maybe. it does, it would take out a city. Yeah, a whole city. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. There's a branch of government part of – I don't know if it survived the Trump changeover, but it's, uh, it's part of uh, Homeland Security where it worries about – Devastation to a region where the grid is taken out as well. So you can't bring emergency services that bring either food, water, medicines, tra- uh, any other form of transportation or communication. How much thought is there to putting in a more robust grid? Uh, I, yeah, what you would need is, that's, that's a good point. So you need a grid that can sort of um, rewire itself rapidly to then bring power to a region uh, that that's what you would need and with they're sort of doing that now making a grid sort of uh, lightning proof you know uh, power surge proof uh, I grew up in New York City where there were a couple of very famous blackouts one in 1966 another in when was it 1978 I think and uh, it was like whoa how should this how is this even allowed? You don't have a backup plan. Yeah. You don't have a way to rewire this, to redirect the electricity. So, yeah, uh, you, you'd need that and you'd want that. And I thought the new grid is supposed to have those kinds of protections built into it. But I don't know enough about it to comment. Yeah, what all it takes is one. One impact. Oh, yeah. One big one. Yeah. It takes out the grid. It takes out the grid. And then what? Do you have solar power at your place? Uh, we just put in pa- pa- solar panels. Yeah, you live we in the place, city. That's I would say, and we have a place in the country that oh, we escape to. Yeah, that's a good move to have that yeah. escape spot. Yeah, but you have a place in upstate New York. I, I, no, no, it's out on Long Island. Yeah, I used to think of it as an escape because we thought of uh, getting it after September 11th. Yeah, got it in 03, uh, 02, something like that. But um, now it's just a good place for me to refuel and do a lot of good writing there and this sort of thing. Look out for ticks. I know. Oh, my gosh. Long Island's overwhelmed with Lyme disease. And they got a new tick, apparently, that prevents you from eating meat. Yes. I wonder if the vegetarians bred that. No. 
Well, I think it's called the Lone Star Tick, and uh, it it prevents you from eating the meat of mammals. Yes, it's it like, makes you allergic to alpha galactose. Is that what it is? It's alpha gal. Another great Radio Lab podcast. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I think the vegans and the vegetarians. I think, I think they, they did it. Yeah, I think they. But you can still eat fish. <laughs> Yeah, just still eat chicken. not eat a mammal. Yeah. You just can't eat red meat. It's something yeah. in red meat. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's one of the challenges. Yeah. Right. Those but, goddamn ticks. Yeah. They are everywhere. And the, the, we, we looked at it the other day. There's Because I have quite a few friends that have Lyme disease, and it's something you do keep for life. Mm. And uh, uh, quite a few friends, like seven or eight, mm. I think, at this point, that have devastating Lyme disease. And it's all East Coast people. Yeah, what are they doing? Making love in the brush? Like, what are they doing? Just walking around, going yeah. for a hike, you know? Yeah, see, yeah, I'm a city person, so even though I moved to the country, I, I go for a hike on my deck. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you don't go anywhere? No, no. Just sit back? I just look out. Yeah, I'm really? cool on the deck. How yeah. did, but, but you're out there in the, this gorgeous country. Don't you want to go wander around a little bit? No, huh? no. <laughs> That's, that's honestly not a thought. Even, My wife, really? who's from Alaska, has those thoughts all the time. Oh. But the, the power of ticks overwhelms her power of curiosity. Those are powerful people in Alaska. That's a different type of human. Yeah, they're, 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 they're bred differently up oh, there. Oh, they're strong. Yeah. Yeah. Those people can survive. Yeah. And, and they, they have a sense of unity up there. It's really interesting. You know, that unity, I think, comes from the fact that they're all in the same risk factors together. Yep. And yeah. if, the, if, if you and I have the same things that can kill us, that makes yeah. us friends.